Good evening. Welcome to the Planning Committee. My name is Councillor Lisa Leach and I'm the Chair of the Committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the Committee runs smoothly, having regard to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain who the rest of the people on the tables here tonight are, to my immediate right is the Council Solicitor, who will give advice to the Committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the Council's Planning Officers, Highway Engineer and Environmental Health Officers who will present the applications this evening and give any technical advice to the Committee which may be sought. The rest of the people you see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this evening and make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the Planning Officers. In the event that an application has received a qualifying petition signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak on behalf of the residents. However, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that might be followed by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee who will then make a decision on the application. The order of tonight's agenda will follow as it is on the agenda itself. If a site visit is requested and approved by the committee, this matter will not be discussed this evening and will be discussed in the subsequent meeting following the committee visiting the site. Okay, uh, agenda item one, uh, can I have approval of the minutes please? Yeah, approved. Please. Uh, before we go on to that, could I ask for a uh, <coughs> site visit on item 10? Um, we'll put that onto that item on the agenda, yeah, but we, we will get to it, thanks. To <laughs> why? Okay, so the approval of those minutes okay? Thank you. Um, are there any declarations of interest, David? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, on item 10, page 4948 of Bay Tree Farm, I am known to the applicants, and therefore I think it would be wrong for me to, to do the things on this particular application. Thanks, David. Are there any requests for site visits? Yeah. Requests for site visits? <coughs> thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, sorry for jumping in before. Yes, I would like to site visit on item 10, Bay Tree Farm Country. I think it would be beneficial to all the members. I'm going to have a look at this one. Okay. Jeff? Likewise, yeah. Can I have a site visit for item 11? I think that would be beneficial for them. Okay, thank you, Gav. Okay. Thanks, Chair. Could I request a site visit for item number 8, please, be a site user of Rosa Village, given the... Uh, given the level of opposition from the local residents and the the Okay, thank you Paul. Okay, so we've been asked for uh, site visits for agenda item 8, which is the clean site in Sir Road, Wallasey Village. Agenda item 10, Bay Tree Farm, Franklin Road. And agenda item 11, which is 6 Central Avenue, Bromborough. We've also had application 12 withdrawn, which is the North Wirral Brickworks in Carl Lane. So if anybody's here with those applications this evening and they would like to leave now, they're more than welcome to do so. Likewise, they can stay if they wish. Can I just check with members that we're happy to approve all of those site visits? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, if we can go to agenda item 4, then 5, Victoria. The amount of pages 5 to 10. If you can have a presentation, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The Planning Commission is to open the demolition of the front boundary wall 
and proposed reduction of view front and partial side boundary walls, the widening of the vehicle access, including the provision of an extended drop curb, and the erection of a glazed balcony to the rear of the public property. The demolition of the boundary wall at the front of the property has already been undertaken, and this element of the application is therefore made in that respect. The proposed new boundary wall is to replace the previously demolished football. The plan has been amended to reduce the height of the proposed wall, which will now be 1.5 metres in height. The width of the proposed view of access has also been reduced to result in a form of development that is now considered to be similar in scale to others within the vicinity. The second element of the proposal is the erection of a simple base structure which will sit above an existing single storey outrigger. Whilst the interface distances fall just short of 21 metres, there are a number of mitigating factors which weigh in favour of the proposal. These include the fact that the land levels of five Victorian lands are significantly lower than those on Price's Lane. Together with the proposed 1.5 metres high, high boundary wall, the lower level means that privacy to 16 Price's Lane will not be affected. Also, 16 Price's Lane has been extended to include a front balcony which overlooks the garden of the Five Victoria Mount, largely due to um, higher land levels. The owners occupies a 16 Price's Lane has not objected to the proposal. The proposal is considered to improve the visual appearance on this core plot, thereby enhancing and contributing positively to the character of Oxford Village Conservation Area. Proposals are recommended for approval. There's no petition of objection. <coughs> Is there a board council would like to speak on this? No? Can I open this one to the committee for any comments? No? Okay, do we have somebody who would um, recommend this for approval? Thank you. And second on? Thank you. Okay, all those in favour of approval? That's carried unanimous, thank you. <coughs> so we go to agenda item 5, Cool Rain Grand uh, and that's starting page 11. You can have a presentation, please. This application is a reserved matters application that seeks approval of the details following the grant of outline by the Commission approved on the 6th of March 2014. That outline application was subject to the committee site visit, providing members the opportunity to see the site. The outline approval uh, was for mixed use development of commercial and residential development. The details of the commercial elements were approved in May 2014. This application now seeks consent for the residential development and seeks permission for the erection of 169 dwellings. The principle of development has already been established with grant of outline permission last year. With this detailed application, the approach has been to follow the gridiron pattern of Bromber Pool Village, which is a conservation area, and to extend this pattern across Pool Lane. Whilst the proposals are more modern than the Victorian development of the original village, Inspiration has nevertheless been drawn from the Victorian village and follows smaller groupings of houses, fronting onto roads and leaving good sized rear garden spaces. The pattern of development also follows the master plan submitted and approved at outline stage. The, lay the layout allows for semi detached properties and short terraces following the streetscape and pattern of development of the original Bromberpool village. And in terms of design, some of some of the key features and architectural styles of the original village have been picked up in the design of the proposed new dwellings. Off street parking is provided for each property, either by way of integral garages and driveways or dedicated off street parking spaces. The proposals are considered to be of a scale and layout that complements existing residential development in Broadwood Village. The proposals are recommended for approval. Uh, there's no petition in relation to this development. There are additional conditions relating to contaminated land um, on late list, and these follow similar conditions that were attached at outline stage. 
Um, in addition to that, it's also proposed to attach two extra conditions in relation to highways works, um, which will be as follows. Prior to the construction of any roads, sewers or foundations, the full scheme of work should be submitted to an agreement writing by the local plan authority for the construction of any new highway or amendment to the existing highway made necessary by this development. Included details of all cycleways and footways, traffic calming measures, traffic regulation orders, street lighting, traffic signs, road markings, half hour paving, and access onto the roadway. The approved work should be completed in accordance with the local plan authority's written approval and in accordance with the timetable to, agree, to be agreed with the local plan authority. The second one is surface water from the site must be drained onto the total separate system from foul water with all the surface water flows generated from the new development being attenuated before discharge into the adjacent water pools. Um, both of those conditions were on the outline commission and they've just been beefed up for the reserve matters. As I said, there's no there's no competition <coughs> objection. Thank you, Matthew. Is there a... I was just going to ask if there's a board council would like to speak on this as well. No, okay, thank you. Can I this over to Percy, David? Yes, thank you, Chair. Just very briefly, um, there's obviously no objection to this at all from anybody, although a lot of forty notifications were sent out. I wonder if you could just give us briefly an elevation uh, of <coughs> what these buildings are going to look like, just so we can refer to whether we feel in contact with what's already there. I think it would be helpful to see an elevation of the properties. Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just to explain, the, the reserve matters application built in two phases. Uh, phase one, um, which will go uh, from phase two. Uh, in terms of the streetscape then, uh, this is an example of how the properties will look in terms of um, street C. So there's a mix of, of um, house types, as I said, there's some semi-detached properties, some small terraces, and the windows, the chimneys, the roof design, and they all reflect some of the uh, properties that exist in front of that's fine, thank you very much. Steve? In terms of the geography of this, I'm uh, uh, fairly familiar with the, 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 old, the application as a first, so as a first domain. It, it, does this, is this part of the application that encroaches onto the old factory site? So the old price is kind of where it's called Unique, as, as I, when I was at the uh, I mean, I had a number of sort of representations as this sort of has developed, and I want some absolute assurance that, um, firstly, there's a, there's a lot of regret from former employees and people who work in the chemical industry that it has actually been lost as an industrial site. It was a, a, a flourishing factory that employed lots of people. Um, I think there's some deep regret that you know, it wasn't saveable as, as, a, as a factory, and I think people need to, to know that. There was an attempt to, to maintain it as a as a as a, a go of concern, albeit it changed hands a number of times in its recent history. So I think the public need to be reassured that this is uh, the final option for, for that site. Second thing has uh, gone on in terms of representation from the, the historic element that there is a list of building uh, that we refer to the clock tower building in the centre of the site, and that there's great anxiety that reassurance is that that is absolutely safe and, and to be developed and, uh, and maintained. And thirdly, as this development has gone on, we've now seen the, the opening of the Sunlight River Park, or Sunlight River Park, and its relationship to that, has that been taken into account as the development's gone on? So there's sort of three points that I would like some clarification on. Uh, thank you, Sri Chair. As I said, uh, when our Planning Commission commission was granted um, last year, um, it was for residential development on this part of the site, and this part of the site was to be redeveloped for commercial and um, some small uh, industrial uh, units as well. So, so that element of the site has been has been retained uh, with this scheme moving forward. Um, in terms of the clock tower, which I think is this building here, as, as you quite rightly say, it's a listed building and. Um, Considerable efforts were made by the council to ensure that that was retained as part of the outline commission. And I think it's important to say that um, although there are conditions on reserve matters, uh, the applicants are constrained by the conditions on the outline and application as well. And they were they were quite comprehensive. And yes, the uh, the relationship with the uh, with the river street development has, has been taken into consideration. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Anybody else? Okay, uh, the officer's recommendation
organisation is to approve this subject to the uh, conditions listed in addition to the amendment, uh, amendment to condition 4 and additional conditions 5 to 7 as shown on the late list. Sorry, and the two that have just been read out by Matthew. Okay, David, thank you. Do you have a second then? Thank you, Denise. All those in favour? That's carried. Okay, if we go to agenda item 6, which is on page 21. Matthew, can I have a presentation, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this application is subject to the site of the Tom Monday. This application seeks permission for a vacant piece of land of immunity space on the corner of New Ferry Road and River Road. The site is not formally designated as urban green space or recreational land in the unitary development plan and is located within the primary residential area for New Ferry. Therefore, the site is not formally protected as an immunity space or public open space and redevelopment of the site for housing is acceptable in principle, subject to the provisions of policy HS4 for new residential development. The application details have been amended to reduce the scale of the development, resulting in the reduction of units proposed on the site and the deletion of the second floor, resulting in a pair of two-storey semi-detached properties. Amended plans have also been received that have moved the proposed dwellings two metres further back from River Grove thereby ensuring a minimum distance of 20 meters, 21 metres is now achieved. And off street parking provision is, has now also been accommodated on the site. The adjacent roads, however, are not subject to parking restrictions, and any small increase in demand for on street parking, given the small scale nature of the development, it is considered that there will be sufficient capacity within the immediate vicinity of the site to accommodate this small increase in demand. Although, as I said, the plans have not been amended to provide for off street parking and um, spaces. The site is also accessible by public transport with bus stops along New Ferry Road and immediately adjacent to the site. The key town centre at New Ferry is also within walking distance of the site, providing access to local amenities. The site was previously maintained by the council but was sold in 2014 as being surplus to requirements. The site is not formally designated as immunity space and its redevelopment for two houses is not considered to be out of keeping with the predominant character of the area, which is residential in nature. The positioning of the two dwellings follows those that face onto River Road and in terms of scale and appearance would sit comfortably within the street scene. The proposals are considered to comply with the provisions of policy HS4 of the Unitary Development Plan and the National Plan and Policy Framework and are therefore recommended for approval. There are additional conditions outlined on the late list, and there is a qualifying petition of objection in relation to this application. Thank you, Matthew. Um, would the, we have a qualified petition, as Matthew said. Would the uh, lead petitioner like to address the committee in support of that petition? Um, in case there are more council would like to speak, would you like to come forward? <coughs> Councillor Steve Nidlock, from the board. <coughs> um, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank the committee for attending the site visit. Um, it has been mentioned, and is mentioned in the report, um, that this site is, well, it's, it actually calls it an immunity open space, uh, although it's not formally designated under the UDP, but as a local resident, you literally that come from this site and passes the site every day. I, I see children playing on this site. Uh, the planning committee members who visited the site will have seen the three large uh, mature trees on the site, uh, and I couldn't believe from the report whether those will be retained or not. Um, the applicant, the applicant, if you look at the, the map of the site, the um, small patch of grass that this is, the, the lower part um, has um, approval for a development of three terraced houses, which was undertaken under delegated powers and only approved last month. Um, I wasn't aware 
um, of that application at all as I look out to their bills at HAPE. Uh, this one obviously has uh, generated the petition and that's why we're here. Uh, in my personal view, this isn't an empty site. Um, unfortunately, it's not protected. And I feel that to have five properties on such a small site with three mature trees, whether they will be retained or not, will be over development of, of such a useful piece of green open space in the local community. Thank you. Um, just uh, to be clear, there isn't a TPA available on those trees. Having heard what 
what Steve said, who went on the side did that I went on, I really have to endorse all he said. I can understand residents being concerned about the loss of green space. Of course, anybody would be concerned over that. But I can't see, and I've thought of this for quite a while, I can't see any sustainable reason for objecting. If we were to object to this tonight, it would immediately be overturned on appeal because there's not a sustainable reason for objection within planning terms that could uh, support a refusal. Um. <coughs> Can I just come back on that? I mean, when, you know, when my mother and then in there and then from there, I mean, your secret development staff, you know, are to like 169 houses in front of the pool, and um, similar developments on the, um, the golf range, you know. So we're not like NIMBYs in Bromley, you know, but I think this will take away from the character of the area. I mean, if you look just slightly further down there, to the triangle, there's another small bit of green space. I think it does add, you know, character to the area, and it would be losing character to the area. And Joe, do you want to move refusal, or should we go to uh, the vote on the officer's recommendation? <laughs> So, sorry, I didn't hear you again. So just a quick question about the trees. I understand they're not protected, but can I take the all be lost if the development goes ahead? Thank you for your chair. There's no indication that the trees will be lost or retained on the site. But as you say, they're not protected by preservation order or by virtue of the conservation areas, so those trees could be felled tomorrow if they wanted to. Okay, Joe, I'll go back to my question then. Would you like to move refusal or would you like to go to the well, vote? Well, that's fine, and I would like to move refusal, so, um, no, move to the vote, Joe. You, you want to move to the vote? Okay. You, you're not moving approval, are you? No, no, no. Yeah, 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 the, the, the solicitor just asked me to, to check on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Can we have a seconder? Thank you, Kathy. Okay, could I have all those in favour of approval subject to the conditions listed and those on the latest? And those against? Oh, that's carried then, thank you. If we now move to agenda item 7, which is on page 27, Matthew, could we have a presentation, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, again, this application is subject to the committee site, as it's on Monday. Commissioners saw the change of use of land to a question of use and the erection of stable blocks and then arch access track and associated yard. By way of background to this application, the Planning Club currently uses a site on Land Drive in Morton. That site is allocated in the Unitary Development Plan as a housing development site and is owned by the Council. Approval to release the site for housing was given by Cabinet and as such, the Council resolved to assist, assist the Planning Club's relocation to an alternative site. The application site is located within Green Belt and is also located within the North, North World Coastal Park and the coastal zone. Therefore, the proposals are considered to be a departure from the development plan, and as such, the Council must be satisfied that there are material considerations that weigh in favour of the development being approved that are contrary to the provisions of the development plan. In terms of the Green Belt, very special circumstances are required to justify the proposals. In this instance, the proposals provide an opportunity to retain a public club which serves local, local hall service and people with equestrian interests. Alternative site searches have been carried out, but more than suitable locations have been planned for various reasons, including requirements related to size area, leases, and proximity to residential property. The visual impact of the development could also be mitigated through designing existing landscape features and proposed landscape enhancements. Additional, <coughs> additional environmental benefits could also be achieved by the removal of invasive species such as Japanese knotweed and relocation of the pony club from its present site in Manor Drive will allow land with a housing development allocation in the, prim in the primary residential area to be brought forward and developed with housing contributing to the world's housing stock. Although the site will reduce public open space, the use proposed is still one of outdoor recreation. Access to the coastal zone and a wider coastal park would not be impacted on. 
two buildings are proposed at the Menage. The nearest residential property is located on, located on Pasture Road and would be some 60 metres from the nearest corner of the proposed new stable and just shy of 45 metres from the nearest part of the proposed Menage. The Apollo Dance Studio is, is sited some 40 metres from the side elevation of the smaller of the two stables proposed and approximately 35 metres from the nearest floor of the proposed menage. The new stables have been sited so as to minimise the impact on the open carriage of the site and the green belt. This part of the site also means that any access tracks required will also be kept to a minimum, further reducing any built or, uh, any built or developed footprint within the green belt. Buildings have been designed and sited to not impact or minimise <coughs> and sited to not um, impact on the open countryside um, and also on neighbouring uses. A number of conditions are proposed to further ensure impacts are minimised and any permission will be made first to the Bowling Club so that in the event that the club ceases to operate from the site, the land will revert back to its original use and all buildings and structures removed. It is considered that there are material considerations that weigh in favour of allowing this development to take place, and the application is recommended for approval. Um, if I just show members the um, site layout. Apollo Dance Studio here, and it has two um, iron doors on its rear elevation um, that uh, look out onto the site. Access to the site would be down um, this, this access track, which isn't of permanent um, materials. Um, this smaller of the two buildings is the tap and equipment room, and this building here is the, is the stable. It's not a traditional uh, British style stable, it's more like an American style barn. So there's a central, character, a central corridor that runs through the middle of the site and the, uh, the stables open internally onto that corridor so it's not open to, uh, not open to the site. The menage is, is to be located here. The rest of the site, um, which, is, which is around here, um, will be um, used for pasture and grazing. Um, there is a, a bund that runs along this part of the site um, and that, as I say, access to the, open, access to the coastal park and the public front paths will be maintained. Um, there are a number of conditions, I think, outlined on the labels again, and um, they reflect the amendments that have been submitted recently. In addition to that, um, there's an additional condition that's proposed in relation to any lighting on the site, and that would read as follows. No development shall take place until the scheme of security lighting and any proposed CCTV has been submitted to and approved in lighting by the local planning party. Any external security lighting should be switched on no earlier than 7 o'clock in the morning and no later than 7 o'clock at night, with a maximum length of operation of 60 minutes. Any external security lighting should only be operational between the 1st of October and the 31st of March in any given year. Any such scheme shall be installed and be operational prior to the first occupation of the development, and the scheme shall be retained for the life of the development. Um, that is to ensure the character and appearance of the area um, is maintained and that any lighting does not adversely impact on residential immunity or nocturnal wildlife being disturbed. Um, the application is recommended for approval and there is a qualified petition. Thanks, Matthew. Would the uh, petitioner like to come forward to speak? Uh, at the bottom of your microphone, you'll see a silver button. If you just press that, that'll put your microphone on. <coughs> if you can give us your name, you have up to five minutes to speak. Hi, my name is Jo Merrill. Um, I'm from the Apollo Club. Um, my husband and me are owners and principals there of the Apollo Dance Club. Um, we have several concerns along with our pupils. We teach people from all parts of the world, children and adults, from the age of five up to 85, we have pupils. Um, a lot of them are concerned 
Um, the Apollo building is a building without windows. So during the summer months, we do need to open fire doors at the back of the building to get fresh air for the pupils while they're dancing. Um, we've been there since 1996, never ever had any, cons uh, any complaints from anybody about anything that we do, and it's always been very orderly. Um, one of our main concerns is the fire escape that runs round the back of the Apollo Dance Club and also down the side where they've built the temporary road. Um, we've always heard it's always been adequate in the case of escape, um, in so much as they can run out onto the fields at the back of the Apollo um, or onto the side. Um, there is now a road being there on the side of the Apollo and at the back it's going to be all fenced off from the field because of the horses. So we are concerned about the fire escape, um, that's one thing. Um, we're also um, concerned about the smell from the manure because we believe that though it's going to be in a closed container, um, it's only going to be empty every eight weeks and it could cause smell, flies, rat infestation. We are, a lot of people are concerned about that. Um, we're also very concerned about the heavy earth moving equipment that could be used during the construction of these buildings because down the side we had huge, I don't know if anybody saw the pictures that I sent in, huge construction engineering things down there and we have had a lot of problems with the shaking of the actual building while the work was being done building that temporary road. Now the temporary road is there, the people are using the temporary road to drive in to the state, to where the temporary stables are on the left, but they're parking their cars alongside our own building, which is only sand. There's no road there, it's just a sandy area that they've left there, and there's up to six cars being parked along there, being driven off the wooden road, and being parked alongside our building. We're very concerned about damage done to the building. Um, the same when you come around the back with the heavy equipment and things like that for building stables, we're concerned about our building being damaged. Um, what is the Apollo land? Well, that's still classed now as um, Green Belt, the actual land that the Apollo is on, will that be classed as Green Belt? or while well, all the surrounding area is um, classed as, as have change of use. Um, the other thing, we were quite surprised that there wasn't a noise impact assessment put into the planning because they would be open the doors at the back. We've never ever had any complaints. But if the new users, they start complaining because the horses don't like music or something and they start complaining about us and um, we've been operating since 1996 and never ever once had a complaint. Um, I have mentioned about the cars parking alongside. These are our main concerns um, from my husband and myself uh, about the building and also from our people's about um, the fresh air, the smell and that. Right. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Would the applicants or agent like to come forward? For the record, if you could just state your name, please. Thank you, Chair. David Anscombe, the Council's Asset Manager. Normally, as this is a council application, I would speak in response to the petition. However, because we have no questioning experience within the Council, we may use a specialist external consultant. Um, this, and we would, we would ask that as our agent he speaks on our behalf, mainly because he's he's got the knowledge of the site, he's worked on the farm, and also this is his specialist work. We have not worked on with him on any other project today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matt, to
This application has been made to facilitate the relocation of the Upton Park Pony Association from the previous location at Fernbank Farm, which they've, they've actually now vacated. And they are in the temporary stable accommodation on this site at the moment. Um, and Fernbank Farm, as you've already heard, has been allocated for housing development with the intention that the land is to be sold. The council agreed to assist the Pony Club with the relocation and so doing, we considered a number of sites with the Kerr's Field site being considered to be the most suitable for all parties. As you can see by the officer report, the application site is subject to a number of development plan designations, uh, including being within the North Royal Coastal Park and Greenbelt, and it's also adjacent to Lisa O'Connor, which is a site of biological importance. Uh, and for those of you that know the site and those that managed to get down there for the site visit earlier on this week, you'll know that it's relatively flat, flat. It's basically split into two areas, with each being separated by the front of the fence pump. And the proposal is to provide the new buildings, also in the yard area and the access point, onto the pasture road side of the site, which is protected from a flooding point of view by the flood defence pump. Uh, with the remaining part of the site to be used as grazing land. The site has been assessed for ecology impact by ACOM, who are a large, well-recognised ecology consultant. Surveys and studies have been completed for the autumn passage of wintering birds and various protected species, such as bats, great crested newts, badgers, um, reptiles, uh, and various bird surveys, and the detail within these studies and the reports has all been thoroughly checked by the Merseyside Environmental Advisory Service, and they have agreed with the findings of the report in that the provisions made within this proposal will actually enhance the environment for birds and protected species rather than threaten them. Um, to summarise these enhancements, the ditches on the site will be improved and properly managed. Uh, the site itself will be improved and properly managed. Uh, the ditches will be cleared of what is currently severely overgrowing shrub and scrub, etc., which in turn will open them up not only to work properly and water to flow through them, but that will mean that they are likely to attract um, particular protected species such as waterhole and perhaps greater crested newts. The site is to be enclosed by means of a double row of timber post and rail fence, which is your typical timber post and rail fence that you see uh, around farmers' fields, with a minimum two metre wide hedge planted between, with a lot of that hedge being a very producing hedge. Can I just tell you, you've got 45 seconds left. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the stable buildings are to be located to the rear of the Apollo Dance Club, as you've already heard. Uh, the closest building to the dance club will be the store, and beyond that will be the stables and beyond that the newer store. Um, the newer <coughs> store that you've... Uh, sorry, the newer store is to be located just on the, the far side of the development and that's as far away as possible from pasture road. It will be required to be emptied every four to six weeks. It will be enclosed, there won't be any dangerous smells or burning or anything like that escaping from that. Um, you'll see that all the statutory consultees have no objection to this proposal, in particular me as a happy with all the recommendations that we've made, as are highways and importantly environmental health. And we've worked closely with the planning department to come to an agreeable solution for the whole development. Thank you, Mr. Um, happy to answer any questions if anyone's got any. I'll have to do a little closer. Thank you very much. Is there a board council that would like to speak on this at all? Um, there was a number of questions that were asked by um, Mrs. Merrill, um, in particular, um, why there wasn't a noise impact assessment, um, and the park uh, alongside um, the Apollo itself, where it was it's sand rather than uh, a roadway. Can somebody just comment on those, please? Uh, thank you for your new chair. Um, a noise assessment wasn't required for an application of this type. Uh, the planning guidance, planning guidance sets out criteria for applications that require noise assessments, and one wasn't um, uh, required for an application of, of this this um, of this type. Just to pick up on the point that the lady raised around the fire escape, fire escape and the access around the building is, is to 
to maintain that will be affected. Um, and, and the other point I wanted to pick up on, I uh, just the question about whether or not it would still be green belt. Um, if planning permission is granted for the change of use of these sites to equestrian use, and um, that doesn't change its designation as green belt, it retains as green belt. And do you want to put on the traffic issues? Sorry, um, just, just on this plan, this, this area here um, is, is proposed as a, as a hard standing, so uh, vehicles will be able to park there if, if permission is, uh, is granted, so there shouldn't be any need to park along this road or something At the moment, that's not there. Those members who attended the site visit on Monday would have seen that. But there is going to be provision of a hard standing for, uh, for parking. And, and I presume if this did become an issue, it's something that we could look at yes. again. Yes. Okay. Right, thank you. Any of the committee got any other questions, Paul? Thanks, Chair. I'm grateful for you allowing me to, uh, to come in here. I've listened with interest to both the petitioners and the applicants. And I must say, I do have great sympathy with the petitioners. I mean, I think it would be useful for the committee to remind itself as to why we're here with this application. There's been a long process, a process which has included the council itself evicting the Pony Association from its current location. Uh, from that, we heard that council officers were told not to communicate various things to the Pony Association. There's been a damning uh, information commissioner's report in light of that as well. I'm just giving background information, Steve, as you've done it on the previous application. Um, so, so, you know, I think it's useful that the committee knows that background. Uh, that being said, I do think that the Pony Association now deserves some stability, and notwithstanding all that, I will be voting in favour. Thank you, Paul. Does anybody else want to make any comments? Well, uh, regrettably, um, we are a planning committee, and I, I was, if I was going to speak, which I wasn't, I was going to say that, irrespective of any of the background of this, the job of this planning committee is to look at it purely on its planning merits. Um, so I will, again, pass on the benefits of going on the site visit. Um, it is a green belt site. And when I go to these sort of sites, I envisage what do you expect to be in the green belt? Do you expect stables and horses? Yes, I think you do. So Jay that with farm and green belt plan. Uh, do we expect certain sounds? Yeah, we do. Horses and, and the like. And do we expect certain smells? Yes, we do. Uh, you know, that is, that is the green belt and countryside in, 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 a, in a nutshell, really. And in, in terms of that, I, I can understand the long established use of the uh, Apollo Club as it was, or the dance school uh, as it is now, and their potential fear of friction between the two. I think, I think that is over exaggerated, um, and I don't think there will be any friction given the sort of distances that I can perceive when it was on the site. I think they'd be fairly uh, cohabitable neighbours, uh, as it were. So um, I, I, I generally, I uh, think it is a suitable use for the Green Belt, something we would expect within the Green Belt, something in the tradition of the Wibble, which is one of the, well, I think the largest also in populations in, in, in the country, per head of population, and uh, I think it's a, a, a thoroughly well worked out. <coughs> David? Yeah. 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 One main brief comment in the Environmental Health Office are actually the big concerns from the petitioners about smells, for want of a better word. Um, there doesn't seem to be very much in the report about saying whether it would have any impact or not. Could you just comment for the benefit of the committee whether you've looked into this and whether you believe seriously that there's any likelihood of smells going to cause problems to either the owners of the Apollo or the residences that are nearby? Thank you, through you, Chair. Um, two officers did do a site visit to look at the location and where the, um, the um, mineral was going to be restored. It's noted it's going to be in a, a covered trailer. Um, that being raised onto the floor will minimise any risk of rat activity bordering underneath and everything. Also, with it being on a movable trailer, um, when it needs to be taken away, it's not going to have to be turned over or anything like that. It can just be hitched up and taken away so it's not being disturbed. That shouldn't be increase any sort of smells or issues and because of the distance away. I think people um, will have seen on the actual day 
the wind was blowing from the stables and from, from where the water was uh, on the day, and there was no real issue on, on the site visit. So we've had no concerns on that. Also, similar developments around the place, we get very, very few if any complaints to do with uh, our with, um, yeah, Thank you for that. So that's the area that's referred to in the condition as the easternmost part of the field. And there will be no access for no. horses to that area. There's a three three chair. There's there's a small access gate, and I think it's located down here, uh, which will allow for horses to be brought uh, to be brought into the um, uh, into the fenced off paddock. So that's the only place for horses. <coughs> Um, thank you, Chair. Um, the owner of the public um, mentioned that cars from Park on and Temple Road. Um, will they want this parking space to provide a little land and then stop? Because again, we should stop that. Okay. Through you, Chair, well, all parking will be directed to this hard standing area here, um, off the, directly off the access track. So it, there is um, sufficient parking provided there for the number of horses and users that are proposed for the site. Thank you, so I'm just going to move approval, actually. Did you ask something else? Thank you. A very comprehensive report. There are one or two things that have uh, been highlighted by myself in relation to the principles of the development and the local plan policy. It's in the report itself. Uh, policy DB2 and the NPPF make provision for, for appropriate facilities for outdoor recreation preserving open the green belt. However, the recent court case has changed that legislation. And then again, on the local planning policy, whilst the proposal could be accepted under the UDP policy GP2 <coughs> and policy LA7, both are partially out of sync with national government guidelines. I'd just like a report to come to the committee later on, trying to level that out for us so it makes it easier for officers to do the job properly.
declared this application was subject to a site visit on Monday. The advertisement concerned is sought for the erection of two illuminated hoardings at the corner of Earl Street and New Chester Road in Newfeld. The site is currently a vacant piece of land which fronts New Chester Road. An application which sought to enclose the site was refused earlier this year, and this revised scheme now seeks to erect two hoardings, one at the rear of the site adjacent to one Earl Street and the other adjacent to commercial properties running along the southern perimeter of the site. Um, so just to explain that further, um, the previous application was refused. Uh, the hoardings ran right down the lane of pavement and the inside pavement edge enclosing the site. Um, the application was refused because it was both it was to the convoys in the street scene. The current application is to erect one hoarding here along this um, end elevation of number one Earl Street and another here um, along uh, the elevation, the end elevation of these properties on New Ferry Road. For those members who attended the site visit on Monday, um, you will have noticed that there were already um, adverts um, in place um, painted to the walls of both game lands and those properties. Uh, the remainder of the site will remain open, um, so uh, all of this site will remain open. Both hoardings will measure 9 metres in length and will be 3.9 metres high, measured from ground level. They will be viewed in context with cable ends and commercial properties. The hoardings will be illuminated by way of two down lights affixed to the top of each hoarding. The angle of the lights will ensure that light will not shine onto adjacent properties or cause a distraction to passing motorists. The hoardings are set back from the pavement and against the inside edge of this vacant site. As such, it is not considered they would have detrimental impact on the character of the area or the street scene in terms of their scale, appearance, or sighting. The application is recommended for approval and there is a board petition. Um, would the petitioner like to come forward to speak on this matter? Yes, I Can I open the subject committee? Any comments? Uh, no, just to show me, uh, I 
Audi very well. Family member lives in Marshall Street. No one had any comment to me about it in relation to this particular application. Lived there for many years. Um, this site has been at Warrington for as long as I can remember. Ever since the, the original colour shop was demolished, there's always been uh, displays there of one, one form or another. Uh, I drove, drove past there many, many times. And but to be honest, I've never been this track before. Uh, the way modern signage is designed, with the candle being so low and lighted uh, pointing downwards, I do not see this as a distraction in any form. It would be no different than any of the lights of both the shops. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Well, again, um, benef the benefits of site visits are, are immense, and, and my first impact um, when I seen the site was how scruffy and untidy it was. Yeah. It was a bit of an eyesore to me. Uh, the rear of the properties um, are overgrown. There is a there is a semblance of a footpath there, but they are so overgrown um, it, it, it's untrue. Now, my my view would be if somehow during the um, application and the development that we could have a goodwill gesture or a, 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 a clear up done because as I understand it, the, the, like many of the areas in this bullet, that, that is an unadopted footway which finds itself nobody wants to take responsibility for. If as part of this development we could encourage the developer to tidy it up, it would actually be beneficial in the long run, be beneficial for uh, one of the fears of antisocial behaviour, I think it would be beneficial if it was clean, tidy and illuminated would be beneficial rather than uh, create more antisocial behaviour. So my view is that you know the site would lend itself to, to being tidied up. I don't know whether you know that, that is possible on, on, under the terms and conditions or, or negotiation could take place, but really it, it was uh, pretty poor. And given you know the, the financial times and the difficulty New Ferry Shopping Centre has gone through over the years. It certainly would, would need a, a tidy up to uh, entice people to, to shop there more. So, my view, I take on board would, would, those, uh, would the signs or the size of them distract drivers any more than that are currently there? It, it, it's, it's a difficult point to assess. My view is that um, it, wouldn't, it would have neither a plus or negative impact on, on, on the driver as a driver himself. So, my view is that. It will actually make the site a bit tidier and hopefully uh, get it tidied up in, in, in the long term. Any other comments? <laughs> I, again, I haven't seen the views Steve on this, and I think it would be the job of advertising is to attract the attention. That's what it's for, isn't it? Let's be honest. You know, and this is Zebra Crossing here. As Steve said, this is the entrance to children go across to Grove Street School. Very, very busy. Um, during the afternoon and the morning. I know for a fact that I've seen a few people go through there on road myself, you know, it's a very busy area. Um, as to what we can do to that, whether we can say, I mean, I appreciate what Steve says, it has been a neglected site over the years. I can well remember people standing through the beds there. He used to go, it's very busy, you know, after the shop, they used to head out to the shop, went, you know. Um, I'm sorry, I can't support, I can't put the reason again, but I have to agree with Steve. Move to the box. Councilman. Okay, thank you. The, the, <laughs> the officer's recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions listed. Do we have a meeting for this? Thank mm -hmm. you, David. Is second that? Thank you, Kathy. All those in favour of approval? Those against? Okay, that's carried. As a side, can we encourage the development? Okay, agenda item 10 is subject to a slight pivot as is agenda item 11. Agenda item 12 has been withdrawn. So we move swiftly on to page 81, um, which is agenda item 13. This item seeks to gain members' approval for planning the applications decided on delegated powers between the 10th of April and the 22nd of May 2015. Any comments from members? Okay. Denise. Thank you, Chair. Um, on page 85, I'm friends with Ward, which is the fourth one down. I'm just wondering, it's, the decision was not lawful use. I'm just wondering why you 
was that decision that I love to Thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, somebody can say, what's yes. called the Lawful Certificate Development, uh, um, um, an application for lawful development, which is yes. actually says so that something is lawful that's not um, without requiring funding. Mm -hmm. In this instance, they thought that the, uh, that the use of the site as an HMO was, was lawful and didn't require planning permission, and we've issued a notice that says it's not a lawful development and does require planning permission for change of use. So it does yes. Well, if you're concerned, is this gone to all six bedrooms or something? And is that why it requires? It falls outside of the C3 use classes. It's one of those um, that falls within the C4. Thanks, Denise. I think the only other comment that I have is on page 122. We don't have the board noted on the final item on that page, which she thinks should be the policy board. Um, any other comments? Are you happy to know this report? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I've not been in a great aware of any of the business, um, but uh, just because we have got site visits, then the site visits will be on Monday the 22nd of June at 10 a.m. And the next planning committee will meet on Wednesday the 24th of June. Thank you for your attendance.